If you heard that chant at UFC 283 in Brazil last week, you may be curious about what that chant means. The translation is a pretty morbid one. You're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. Whether it be Capoeira, Ballet Tuda, and of course BJJ, Brazil is deeply ingrained in combat sports. Sometimes the relationship between country and sport can be fun and positive. Two Brazilian politicians, Major Vitor Hugo and Vanderson Nogueira, recently decided to settle their dispute with a one-on-one -on -one fight in a cage. Both men are highly trained martial artists and have reputations as strong fighters. The two were part of opposing political parties and had previously come to blows during a heated debate. This time, they chose to fight in order to settle the differences between them. During the match, both men gave it their all, displaying impressive strength and technique. In the end, it was Hugo who emerged victorious, although not without suffering some minor injuries. Despite this unusual way of settling disputes, onlookers agreed that it was effective, as the two politicians seemed more amicable afterwards than before. But sometimes it can be a whole lot darker. On the 8th of January 2023, following the defeat of then-President Jair Bolsonaro in the 2022 Brazilian general election, a mob of his supporters attacked Brazil's federal government buildings in the capital, Brasilia. The mob invaded and vandalized the Supreme Federal Court, the National Congress Building, and the Planalto Presidential Palace in the Three Powers Plaza, seeking to violently overthrow the democratically elected president of Brazil, Luiz Lula da Silva, also known as Lula, who had been inaugurated on the 1st of January. Many rioters said their purpose was to spur military leaders to commit a coup and disrupt the democratic transition of power. More than 2,000 people were arrested immediately after after the riots by backers of far-right ex-president Bolsonaro. Of these, about 300 were detained at the scene of the crime, but the majority were rounded up at an encampment of Bolsonaro's supporters some eight kilometers away where they had returned after taking part in the uprising. Nine days later, some 1,400 remain in custody. Neither Lula nor Bolsonaro were in Brasilia at the time of the attack. Lula, who had been visiting the state of Sao Paulo, returned to the capital Sunday evening to deter the destruction, walking past shattered windows and ripped artwork in the presidential palace. He condemned the riots as abominable and said those involved would be found and punished. But where was Bolsonaro? Before we discuss the relationship between that room and Bolsonaro, let's learn why he is so polarizing. Also, if you don't mind, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below what you want to see next. Bolsonaro was born in Glycerio, Sao Paulo, Brazil on March 21st, 1955 to Percy, a small business owner, and Olinda, a housewife. He had four brothers, three of whom became politicians. As a child, he was passionate about the military and went to the Agolas Negras Military Academy, graduating in 1977. He served in the Brazilian army for more than two decades, attaining the rank of captain in the reserves. He earned numerous medals, including the National Order of Military Merit, the Order of Military Merit of Para, and the Order of Military Merit of Santa Catarina. He also commanded a parachute infantry battalion in the Amazon region. In 1985, Bolsonaro became a member of the Rio de Janeiro City Council, a post he held until 1988. Two years later, he was elected to the Chamber of Deputies, the lower house of the Brazilian National Congress for the state of Rio de Janeiro. He joined the Progressive Party and was re-elected in 1994, 1998, 2002, and 2006. His views gradually shifted to the right, and he became a vocal opponent of the Workers' Party. In 2002, he was expelled from the Progressive Party for opposing President Fernando Henrique Cardoso's pension reform. In 2006, he founded the Social Liberal Party and was re-elected to the Chamber of Deputies. He was known for making provocative statements, such as his 2008 speech in support of torture. In 2010, he was expelled from the Chamber of Deputies for addressing a female colleague in a derogatory manner. That same year, he made an unsuccessful bid to become the governor of Rio de Janeiro. Despite this setback, Bolsonaro was elected to the lower house of Brazil's Congress for six consecutive terms, starting in 1991. He won the highest vote total in the country in 2014, becoming popular due to his extreme rhetoric and conservative policies. Bolsonaro was a vocal critic of the former president Dilma Rousseff's government, which was impeached in 2016. He also fiercely opposed the Workers' Party, which held power from 2003 to 2016. His views on law and order and his criticism of the left-wing establishment gained him popularity among right-wing voters. In 2018, he won the presidency in a landslide, running on a platform of anti-corruption, anti-crime, and pro-market policies. 
His victory sparked protests from those worried that his policies would erode civil liberties and threaten democracy. Since taking office, Bolsonaro has adopted a hard stance on crime and corruption, pushing for laws that would strengthen police powers and restrict the power of the judiciary. He has also sought to rescind laws safeguarding the environment and indigenous people, along with long-standing social programs. His policies have been denounced by human rights groups both at home and abroad. Bolsonaro has been a vocal supporter of the Brazilian mixed martial arts industry, which is a major contributor to the country's economy. In 2018, the MMA industry in Brazil generated an estimated $2.4 billion in revenue, and it is expected to continue growing in the coming years. Bolsonaro has been a staunch advocate for MMA and has promised to create a favorable economic climate for the industry. He has promised to reduce taxes on athletes and promoters, as well as provide government incentives to attract more investments in the industry. Bolsonaro has also promised to reduce regulations on MMA events, allowing them to be broadcast on television and other media outlets. Bolsonaro's pro-MMA policies have been met with approval from the MMA industry, which is largely supportive of the president's economic agenda. The MMA industry in Brazil has become deeply intertwined with politics, as President Bolsonaro has used the sport to mobilize his supporters and promote his political agenda. Bolsonaro has been an outspoken advocate for MMA and has appointed several MMA fighters to his cabinet, including MMA legend Vanderlei Silva. Bolsonaro has also used the sport to appeal to his base, using MMA fighters as surrogates to spread his message of patriotism and nationalism. Bolsonaro has also used the sport to promote his anti-leftist policies, criticizing the left-wing workers' party and its former leader, former President Lula. The social and political impact of Bolsonaro's pro-MMA policies has been profound, with MMA becoming a powerful tool for the president to galvanize his base and promote his political agenda. Karim Zaidan's article examines why some of Brazil's top MMA fighters are endorsing the far-right Bolsonaro. He argues that Bolsonaro's appeal to some of the fighters is due to his authoritarian rhetoric and his promises to address crime and corruption, which are two major issues in Brazil. He further states that the fighters have been drawn to Bolsonaro's rhetoric of religious conservatism and his promise to maintain the country's traditional values. He goes on to explain that Bolsonaro's views on gender and LGBTQ issues have been especially attractive to some of the fighters. He also highlights the fact that Bolsonaro's use of social media has helped him to increase his popularity among MMA fighters. He notes that the endorsement of Bolsonaro by the fighters may have a negative effect on the sport, as many of the fighters' fans may not be in favor of his views. He further argues that the fighters should consider the potential consequences of endorsing a far-right candidate. Finally, he points out that there is a dilemma for the fighters, as they need to decide if they should support a candidate they believe will benefit the country, or if they should remain neutral in the political arena. The UFC fighter Verna Jandaroba has been vocal in her criticism of Brazilian President Bolsonaro's handling of the pandemic. She has publicly criticized Bolsonaro's failure to implement social distancing measures and his refusal to acknowledge the severity of the virus. She has also called out his lack of leadership and his disregard for science, which she believes has contributed to the high number of cases in Brazil. Jan Duroba's criticism has been echoed by other international leaders, including French President Emmanuel Macron and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. President Bolsonaro has faced significant opposition domestically to his handling of the pandemic. In May 2020, thousands of Brazilians protested in the streets calling for his resignation. In addition, many of Bolsonaro's political opponents have called for him to resign, including the Brazilian Socialist Party, the Workers' Party, and the Brazilian Democratic Movement. Bolsonaro's approval ratings have also dropped significantly, with a survey conducted by Pulsar Datafall as showing his approval rating had fallen from 64% in February 2020 to just 31% in June 2020. This widespread disapproval of Bolsonaro's handling of the pandemic has led to increased political opposition to his presidency. Bolsonaro inspired many, including MMA legend Vanderlei Silva. He has become an outspoken political figure in his native Brazil, campaigning on the issues of healthcare and education reform. He believes that politicians should be held accountable and that progress can only be made through hard work and dedication. In Brazil, party politics dominate the political landscape and Silva was running as an independent candidate. He was also up against powerful incumbents and was unable to match their financial resources. Despite this, he was able to generate a strong grassroots campaign and had the support of thousands of people from all over Brazil. Silva ultimately lost. Despite all of his fame and campaigning efforts, Silva was unable to secure the seat in the Brazilian Congress. Although this was a disappointment for Silva, it was a victory for the Brazilian political establishment, who were able to keep an independent fighter out of the system. 
by looking at Silva's story, we can gain insight into Brazilian politics and the challenges faced by independent candidates, but see why they are becoming more popular. According to Reuters, the right wing won a majority in the Congress, demonstrating their staying power and building momentum for the Bolsonarismo movement. This win was largely due to Bolsonaro's populist appeal and his promises to restore order and justice to the country. According to Open Democracy, Bolsonaro's victory in 2018 and his supporters' gains in 2022 have been seen as a major setback for the advancement of human rights and democracy in Latin America. This is due to his history of making incendiary comments about women, LGBTQ people and minorities, as well as his support for authoritarian policies. Furthermore, the election of a far-right government could lead to Brazil becoming increasingly isolated from the international community. According to a report from the Congressional Research Service, Bolsonaro's policies are likely been detrimental to the country's economy. His fiscal policies could lead to a widening of the budget deficit, while his hardline stance on crime could lead to further polarization of the country. Additionally, his foreign policy could lead to a decrease in foreign investment and a weakening of diplomatic ties with other countries. We have seen that the victory of the right wing could lead to a weakening of human rights and democracy in Brazil and could also have a negative impact on the country's economy and international relations. Therefore, it is critical that the international community take steps to ensure that Brazil remains a stable and democratic. There were 11 people who ran for president in the first round of the election, but only two had a chance of being elected. The incumbent, Bolsonaro, and Lula, who was the former president. Lula is a Brazilian politician and former president of Brazil, serving from 2003 to 2011. Before becoming president, Lula served as a union leader, founding the Workers' Party, which he led for 21 years. Lula was born into a poor family and had to leave school at age 12 to help support his family. He rose to prominence in the 1970s as a union leader, leading strikes and protests on behalf of workers. He was a vocal critic of Brazil's military dictatorship and advocated for greater worker rights. As president, Lula implemented economic policies that lifted millions of Brazilians out of poverty. He increased social spending, raised the minimum wage, and expanded access to healthcare and education. He also worked to reduce inequality and create jobs, and he was successful in reducing unemployment and poverty in Brazil. Lula also implemented environmental policies that focused on renewable energy and reducing deforestation. He was a strong advocate for global climate change initiatives and helped broker a deal between developed and developing countries at the 2009 Copenhagen Climate Talks. Lula left office in 2011 with a high approval rating and was widely praised for his successful economic and social policies. In July 2017, Lula was convicted of money laundering and corruption in a controversial trial, resulting in a nine-and-a-half-year prison sentence. The trial was overseen by the federal judge, Sergio Moro, who later became Minister of Justice and Public Security in Bolsonaro's government. Lula attempted to appeal the conviction, but was unsuccessful and was arrested in April 2018. He was disqualified from running in the 2018 presidential election due to the Fisher Limpa law. In November 2019, the Supreme Federal Court ruled that incarcerations with pending appeals were unlawful, resulting in Lula's release from prison. In March 2021, Supreme Federal Court Justice Edson Fachin found that Lula was tried by a court that did not have proper jurisdiction and all of his convictions were nullified. This ruling was confirmed by other Supreme Court justices in April 2021 and Lula's political rights were restored. The Supreme Federal Court also ruled in March 2021 that Judge Moro was biased in the corruption trial. As a result, all of the cases Moro had brought against Lula were annulled by the 24th of June 2021. This ruling legally allowed Lula to run for president again in the 2022 elections. The campaign started on August 16, which was a time when Brazil was having a lot of trouble because of the pandemic and the war in Ukraine. Lula and Bolsonaro both got a lot of votes in the first round, but neither of them got an outright majority. So his second round of voting was required four weeks later. In the second round of voting, Lula secured a majority of votes and was again elected president. When he takes office on January 1, 2023, he will become the first Brazilian president to serve a third term. Lula's election was praised by many leaders on the left, including other left-wing presidents in Latin America. Bolsonaro faced a new challenge after hundreds of his supporters gathered to protest outside the presidential palace and Congress building in Brasilia. 
The protesters, some of whom were armed, demanded that Congress pass Bolsonaro's proposed pension reform. Police had to intervene to prevent the protesters from entering the palace. The demonstration was organized by the pro-Bolsonaro Free Brazil movement, which called on the president's supporters to gather in the capital and express their support for the pension reform. The movement said the protests were organized to defend democracy and restore law and order in Brazil. The protest came as Bolsonaro's approval ratings have declined significantly since he took office in January 2019. In addition, the president has faced criticism for his handling of the coronavirus pandemic and his government's human rights record. But where was Jair and what does a minion bedroom have to do with this? Former Brazilian leader Jair Bolsonaro has recently announced his move to Florida, taking refuge in the home of UFC fighter Jose Aldo. Bolsonaro, who is a right-wing politician, has been the target of much criticism and unrest due to his divisive policies and actions. This move is believed to be in response to the unrest in Brazil that has been increasing lately. Bolsonaro is no stranger to controversy, having been accused of racism, sexism, and homophobia throughout his tenure as president of Brazil. He has also been criticized for his response to the pandemic, which has been widely regarded as inadequate. His choice to relocate to Florida has raised many eyebrows, as it is the home of many of his political opponents. It is unclear at this point how long Bolsonaro will remain in Aldo's home, or whether he intends to stay permanently. It's also unknown whether he's staying in the Minion's room in Aldo's home. What is certain, however, is that this move has sparked controversy both in Brazil and in the United States. It remains to be seen what impact this move will have on the political landscape in both countries, and how it will affect the future of Bolsonaro's career. The video also sparked a scandal surrounding Jose Aldo and his wife, who were accused of receiving government handouts while on vacation. Aldo's wife has denied the allegations, claiming that the accusations were made by snooping leftists who were trying to discredit the couple. Former flyweight champion D. Vicen Figurito posted a photo of himself wearing a t-shirt bearing Bolsonaro's name, along with the caption, It's time for a coup to cleanse this society of communists and make Brazil great again. This has led to some criticism from fans, who feel that the UFC should not be endorsing political causes. However, there are some who feel that his comments are in line with his beliefs and should not be seen as a political endorsement from the UFC. He is from Brazil and has been vocal about his support for Bolsonaro and his anti-communist views. He has also been critical of Brazil's previous president Dilma Rousseff and her left-leaning policies. His comments about a military coup may seem extreme, but it is important to note that Brazil has a long history of military rule and coups. In 1964, a military overthrow of the democratic government occurred and ushered into two decades of oppressive rule. Since then, Brazil has returned to democracy, but tensions between the left and right remain high. The UFC has yet to comment on his remarks, but it is clear that the organization is walking a fine line between respecting its athletes' beliefs and not endorsing a political agenda. No matter what side of the debate you may find yourself on, it is important to remember that Figueiredo's comments are his own, and not necessarily reflective of the UFC's stance on the issue. Bolsonaro, the president of Brazil, has recently come under fire for his refusal to leave the United States until he is granted an asylum. With this in mind, it's important to consider what would happen if he doesn't comply with international law and remains in the U.S. If that were the case, then the ramifications could be severe both domestically and internationally. On a domestic level, it would set a dangerous precedent by allowing leaders who are accused of human rights violations to essentially go unchecked. Meanwhile, on an international scale, it could severely damage diplomatic relations between the U.S. and Brazil, as well as cause other countries to question America's commitment to upholding its principles and values. Ultimately, this saga underscores the importance of compliance with international law and serves as yet another example of how even powerful nations must adhere to their respective laws. But we will have to wait to see what happens next. If you stayed around, please share and like this video and subscribe to this channel. I got another video right here. Thanks for watching.